fish are kind of the canary in the coal mine for our aquatic ecosystems. If the fish are doing well, you can generally figure that most everything else in that watershed that depends on that water is doing well. Right now we know from, from some of the studies that, that we've done at NC State that the population in the Roanoke River, at least we estimate it to be only a few thousand fish. And, and it probably you know, was a million fish or more at one time. So uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. These fish, they're not extinct or at the point of going extinct, but they need, need a little bit of help. The restoration program for American Shad is based on several different strategies. One is uh, to bring brood fish, adult brood fish, into the hatcheries to produce young fry that can be stocked back into the rivers. The hope is that that will contribute to larger populations down the road. currently in our American Shad production season. And we go to the Roanoke River, which is the river we're restoring, collect adult fish during their spawning run. Uh, the electrofishing temporarily stuns and draws the fish toward the current. We're then able to scoop the fish up and put them in live transport tanks to be transported back here to Edenton. We're, we're very particular about the water quality that the fish are in. We try to mimic uh, the natural system as closely as we can so the fish aren't under any stress. And part of that is monitoring pH, which is the acidity of the water, uh, the oxygen level, and hardness. When we bring in the adult fish, we take a fin clip from them for genetic analysis, and that's another way that we can trace the hatchery component of the population that's returning. Because by doing a genetic analysis of a re returning fish, we can determine its parentage as well. Bring them back to the hatchery, put them in circular tanks, and generally over the periods of darkness, usually around midnight to two in the morning, the fish will spawn in the tanks. We'll collect their eggs the next morning. <clears throat> their eggs are then uh, run through sieves, two millimeter sieves. Eggs that are smaller than two millimeter typically are no good. We want to know how many of these eggs are eggs that are going to hatch or how many of these eggs may not hatch. Because we want to put accurate numbers in our river system so that the biologists, when they're doing their research on the rivers, they can assess how many fish are being put in properly. At that point, we'll put them in incubators, uh, egg jars that'll keep them aerated, enough oxygen to develop, and then we wait. Once they hatch, they go into uh, circular rearing tanks that are about three feet in diameter. We feed them a diet of newly hatched brine shrimp. We'll feed them for about six days to get some growth on them, get, a, get some food in their bellies. Last year, we stocked just under four million fry into the river. And we got that from about six million eggs. trying to record and make observations to see from the morning to the afternoon what's happened. It allows children in these classrooms to observe the development of these eggs. So describe them with words and with pictures. They can watch the eggs go from just a pale yellow sphere to getting darker. They can see the little eyes in the embryonic fish develop. And then they can see the, the embryonic fish start to wiggle in the eggs and actually hatch. They'll hatch in their aquariums. And then these children get to stock the fish into a stream, and generally they think that's just neat. That's their fish, and they're putting it back in their stream. So we think it's a very good program. <laughs>